This is the USS Rankin in July 1946 in the North Pacific. See the caved-in gun turret uh, forward in the anti-aircraft area and the bulkhead. There's my chief pharmacist mate and first class pharmacist mate viewing the damage. Uh, you can see how the ship is still rolling from the typhoon we've just gone through. And here's the bulkhead of the lower bridge there, just up the gangway, or up the ladder, caved back in too from waves over the main deck. And it's just a little of the ocean streaming by. The playback uh, a, to the North Pacific, you can see the ship rolling in the APAs forward. It's rocking so much I slipped during one of the shots. There, the, the good old-fashioned system of signaling between ships in those days with the Morse code flashing. There's a shot down to some of the landing craft athwart ships. And we'll see the flag. The flag is torn in half beyond, torn off beyond the, the stars. Only a part of the stripes left. There are the APAs on ahead. The Bollinger, the Chilton. I can't think of the other one at the moment. These are dock workers uh, in Yokosuka in the dry dock, largest in the world at that time with water in. All four of our ships fit in a dry dock. There is yours truly uh, car, four cars. There's the executive officer left and Jack Amon, the boat group commander, Captain Atkins there with the executive officer. And uh, there's the paymaster, Paul Allen, the car being loaded over the side, uh, the skipper and executive officer and my Roommate, um, that's uh, Tom Fuller. We rode the car up to Tokyo to the officers' club, a uh, big home, big mansion there. That's the license on the back. A uh, little boy walking in his clogs and a couple ladies talking. There was supposed to be no fraternization between those. This is more bomb damage here, burned out area, twisted steel. And only of this factory, only the smokestack left. This is uh, MacArthur's headquarters, the Daiichi building, I believe. And these are some, this is the business district, the Ginza districts, with all the stores, shops, and roadside. There's, a, I think, a soldier riding a rickshaw. I truly just saying something to the family back home. That was the Imperial Palace. Right here is the Fujia Hotel, which was an R and R site. Army whole families could be there. Navy no families allowed uh, uh, yet, and uh, uh, some of us uh, had a couple of days of R and R there. This is the 42nd General Hospital, which in peacetime was the St. Luke's Mission Hospital, uh, Episcopal, the St. Luke's Hospital or Episcopal Mission Hospitals. Here are some of the intact buildings in Tokyo. And the street workers, not much in the way of mechanization as you can see, a few cars around. Bicycles and rickshaws were there. This is the Armed Forces uh, Championship football game. I believe this was in Yokohama. They called this stadium the Lou Gehrig Stadium, uh, at least temporarily for the, by the military. And General Mark Clark was there. I don't know whether that's Mark Clark there. It could be. And some of the other br brass, mostly Army brass. Here's the Imperial Palace 
back in Tokyo. The early pictures were color. These are all outdated film in 1946 that I used. There's fraternization a little bit that's not supposed to be. This is Tokyo, and that's the Daiichi building again, uh, MacArthur's headquarters. This is the Diet building where the Chinese or the Japanese legislature met. Uh, it was untouched by bombs. There are three of our officers. That's George, he's not living. I don't know about that warrant officer. This fellow's not living. He was a younger ensign. This is up in the top of the diet, now seeing some of the buildings bombed out right nearby below there. So there was pretty selective bombing. Here we're moving on, I think, to Chinese. This is a sampan. You'll see a junk nearby. Here is our gunnery practice with the aft cannon. This was uh, on our way to join the uh, U.S. China fleet in Sing Tao. Or we may have gone out from Sing Tao to have this gunnery practice. There I'm getting the, pl the plugs out of my ears. There is Paul Allen, our paymaster and uh, medical officer from the Marine Group, whom I knew, Paul again. Here we are pulling into uh, the harbor. There's a junk, Chinese junk. And Sing Tao was built by the Germans before World War I, was taken away from them after World War I. Sing Tao beer is still their best beer. Some of you, I'm sure, acquainted with that or have had it. This is Pagoda Pier. Call that because of this pagoda at the end of the pier. Chinese watching us come in. We'll have a number of pictures of the Chinese Nationalist Army and uh, pedestrians walking around Sing Tao. We'll see some of the older women with, who had their feet bound as little girls and they just have stubs to walk on now. That was supposed to be a thing of beauty. A lot of the city looks European because the Germans built much of it. The washing right on the street, right nearby the kids playing. There's the small feet there, practically just stubs. They're doing their sewing right on the sidewalk. I don't know whether that's opium or just tobacco. Again, foot stubs, as you see, from the bound feet in childhood. And the vendors carrying their stuff on shoulder poles and the vendors' booths along the street. Here we see they've got a Protestant church uh, there as well as Catholic church. I think that's the American consulate we just saw. Big crowd here. They're going to have a parade now of the Chinese Nationalist Army that were still occupying this part and the U.S. forces were there kind of giving them back up. I guess that's Shanghai Shack there, a big picture on the truck. Catholic mission there. There's a lady walking on her stubs. This is our first class pharmacist mate who was our pitcher. We're playing the U USS Benevolence, which had uniforms we didn't have, but we were the best team in the U.S. China fleet other than the Benevolence team. They beat us here. There is a shot of the Benevolence uh, tied up. 
the rest of us were all at anchor out in the bay. We took off on a board a man from a minesweeper that had bad tonsillitis. Here I'm repairing a partially amputated finger. My first class pharmacist made help me on the left and I'm on the right. We had to put a skin flap over the end of it. That occurred in the, actually in the typhoon and uh, in the rough weather some oil drums broke loose and he got his one finger unfortunately caught between them. There's Jack Amon, my our boat group commander and my base, my bunk mate, cabin mate. Here is the frozen ice water, uh, salt water, at Chinwang Tao. We were ordered up there to evacuate the 7th Regiment of the 1st Marine Division. There I'm making a snowball out of salt, frozen salt water. It was that cold. Here are some Belgian priests who, among other things, uh, uh, supervise a, a little orphanage. There's a Chinese priest with them and a Chinese officer, young officer, and the uh, nuns are Chinese, and the little girls will come mar marching out shortly. One of them made up like Santa Claus, having fun. There are the little girls coming out to have us see their nice winter clothing. They really were well supplied with winter clothes. There are the nuns, another one of the priests, and a couple of Red Cross workers there helping them. This film is, you know, is now 60 plus years old. This is a Chinese nationalist ship letting some troops off. The wives and children followed them or they had starved. Here's their mechanization. They had mules that they're lo lowering over to the side off the ship and the, they will later get pushed out uh, by Mao Zedong's communist forces. And here we are in San Diego being greeted by a military band and drum majorettes, and we're happy to get back home.